Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 14 beta four has been out for well, a few days, depending on whether or not you're using the developer beta or the public beta, which are identical. They have the same build number. I've been using it on my iPhone 11 pro max. Also my 12.9 inch iPad pro from 2020. These are my two main devices. I also have it on the original iPhone SE and the iPhone seven. So I wanted to talk about how it's been for me, how it's been for you. We'll take a look at the YouTube community poll and Quite a few people have very different opinions on this particular beta as compared to previous betas. So this one is great for some buggy for others. So let's talk about the issues I've had than the issues you've had. And so the first thing is the issues I've had seem to be more touch related than anything. I've had weird delays when I turn on the screen, touching the screen seems to delay it when I'm trying to turn it on. And then finally it will turn on. If I use the power button, it seems to be a little bit quicker. Sometimes you'll see it's very strange and sometimes I need to restart it to get this to work properly. So that's the main issue I'm having that and touch responsiveness. I think they're all related, but that's the issue I'm actually having with this particular one. Now, also the first time I opened the notes app, the new pop-up came up that told me about the new features and my keyboard showed up here and I couldn't get past that screen without actually closing the application and going back in over and over and over. So the first time I opened notes, I got that new dialogue or pop-up and the continue button was under the keyboard. So I couldn't touch it. And so I actually had to close the application multiple times and then go back in to get it to work. I know quite a few of you had the same issue. So someone said they had that issue. It took them three tries to get past that. So it will work, but just keep trying. So that's a weird bug and make sure to report it in the feedback app, wherever it is on my phone here, it's here somewhere, but either way, make sure you report it. If you're having that issue also, it just has some lag from time to time. So I haven't had any issues with applications, photos, anything like that, but I have had those lag issues. And some people are seeing issues with say the clock showing the correct time. You'll see here, it's not showing the correct time, but that's three hours behind. So it actually is kind of okay. Just make sure it's set to your region, but the weather doesn't update in real time sometimes for people. And so I'm seeing that as well, but it's okay for me right now. Now the issues most of you are saying you're having are similar issues with maybe the widgets not working properly. You can see on the iPhone seven, it's not working properly. The reminders widget just doesn't show data properly. And I've tried it a few different ways and it doesn't seem to work properly. Sometimes it pops up, sometimes it doesn't. So there's issues with widgets in general. And in fact, I think Apple's leaving themselves wide open for future opportunities because widgets don't update in real time. They actually just check every whatever seconds you, you set it to. It could be every five seconds. It could be every 30 minutes. It's up to the designer of the widget. So that's something to note. Also, many people are seeing app crashes. Now I've had issues with banking apps, for example, but many people are having issues with say call of duty, mobile, Pokemon, go Instagram banking apps. I haven't had any issues with Instagram crashing, but I know a lot of people that are and call of duty mobile just won't play. It doesn't work on my iPad here either. So I actually have it here. If I open it up, it just crashes every time. So you can see that again, if I open that up, it will crash every single time. So I don't know what's going on with that, but it's definitely an issue. And so hopefully it's fixed in beta five, but it's again, it's a beta and it's not out to the public yet. So the app developers will have to update their apps as well. Now, many people are reporting issues with the camera. I haven't seen this myself. I can snap photos, no problem. Whatever I want to do, it seems to work okay. But some people are having major camera issues where it just won't work properly. It crashes. They can't use it or anything else. Also, many people are saying the keyboard is unresponsive. So where I was having issues with trying to get past the keyboard, some people are just saying it doesn't work properly at all. So it seems to work okay for me, but many people are having issues with it. Also, other than lags and things like I mentioned, people are having lagging, freezing, and I'm seeing this more and more based off the community poll. And I'll share with, share that with you in a moment. A few people are having issues with respring. So the phone kind of rebooting on its own. And also there's a few people saying AirPods don't work when connected and you're making a phone call. So it's a pretty crucial application of AirPods and it's not working for quite a few people. So that's sort of disappointing for a lot of people. And so most of the time, a hard reboot will fix that. So for example, on an iPhone 11 pro max, that's volume up, volume down, press and hold the power button until the phone reboots. And then you'll be back in 
once it reboots, it will work properly. And usually the issues I'm having will be fixed as well. I have had to hard reboot, reboot it a couple times. But the interesting thing is there's quite a few people that say it's fantastic, it's the best beta. So it seems to be very 50-50 that 50% say it's terrible, 50% say it's fantastic. But again, we'll take a look at the poll in just a moment. Now on older devices, most people are saying that performance is fantastic. So on the iPhone SE, most people are saying it's very responsive when it's not giving lag or having any issues. So you'll see again, I can open the camera quickly, maybe go into music, go back out, maybe go into the clock here. And everything just seems to work okay on the older devices. That includes the iPhone 7. I know some people were having issues specifically with the 7 in the past, but in, in general, it seems to be okay. So again, if we go into things like the App Store, we'll let it load for a moment. And once it's loaded, it should be okay and fairly smooth. So it's really weird. Some people are seeing such jarring contrasts as far as that goes. Again, no issues with the camera for me. So I don't know if it's a specific set of apps people have installed, some other apps people are trying. But then again, my other main used device is my iPad Pro. And so my iPad Pro here seems to be good for the most part. But again, I have those weird touch responsive issues. So here I have the weather, which is nice to have, but it opens up the weather. And touching the display is sometimes okay, sometimes it's not and it doesn't respond properly sometimes. Like I said, I can't play games like Call of Duty on the iPad, and others are reporting similar issues. Now, I'm not too bothered by this since this is a beta, but it is something to note, so I don't ever recommend someone not update to a beta, and that's because that's sort of our duty as beta testers is to report bugs through the feedback app. So you wanna make sure you report them through the feedback app, let Apple know, and then hopefully we'll see a new one soon. So as far as a new one coming out, well, iOS 14 beta five, I would expect that probably in a week or so, it's hard to say exactly what Apple's going to do. So in the past, you can see here on the left are the days that they've actually released betas with iOS 12 and iOS 13. So based on that, we may have to wait another week. So I guess if you need to do critical things on your phone, then don't update. But generally I always say update because well, it's sort of something we offer in return. So we get new features, we offer feedback, that sort of thing. But if it's crucial to you, then maybe you should wait. So based on that, maybe we won't see an update this coming week, but it will be another week. But again, Apple can change this at any time. In fact, I already thought Apple would release iOS 13.6.1 to devices with 13.6, since there's some bugs and maybe some security issues. So maybe we could see that this week, but Based on what they've done in the past, if it's not released this week, I'll be fairly surprised by that. So maybe iOS 13.6.1 this week, and then beta five the following week. But again, Apple can change it at any time. They could release two in a week or wait three weeks. It's up to them what they do, and they don't actually have a set schedule. So I'm just basing it off previous data that we've had in the past. Now, battery life on iOS 14 beta four is, at least it feels like it's better than it was with beta three for me. So let's take a look at that. If we go into settings, go down to battery, let's take a look at battery health, and you'll see my battery health is at 96%, and battery health does not go down just by doing a beta or installing a beta. It's actually rechecking the physical health of the battery inside the phone. All batteries degrade over time, and it's just letting you know what it's at. So 80% after two years is normal. If we take a look at the last 10 days, you'll see that I've used my phone up to about 50% battery life. So if we take a look at yesterday, I had four hours and 34 minutes of screen on time, two hours and 37 minutes of screen off time. Since I only used 50% of my battery, if I was to use 100%, I'd get about nine hours of screen on time. While that's not what I was getting with iOS 13.6, I was getting closer to 10 to 12 hours. It does seem to be better than the previous beta, as you can see here, where I used between 50 and 75% of my battery life, and I didn't even get four hours of screen on time. So again, if we take a look at the previous beta, beta three, I used a little over 50% and still got less battery life. So it's not greatly improved, but it's definitely a little bit better for me. Some people are saying that it's better. Some people are saying that it's worse and quite a few are just saying it's about the same, but again, it's an early beta. So don't expect them to work very much on battery life until closer to the final release later this year in the fall. Now here's all of the issues that many of you mentioned. So you can see 84 of you mentioned battery. This is based on the comments that you left on the YouTube community poll. Only a few people are mentioning heat 
25 of you are mentioning freezing and lagging, like I said. So I've seen this quite a bit. Many people are saying that. Most people are saying there's no issues with Wi-Fi, LTE, Bluetooth, or mail, but occasionally the Bluetooth complaints are more around AirPods or connected headphones if they're having issues. And the only thing I've noticed is sometimes it doesn't connect to my car that uses Bluetooth. And occasionally it takes a little bit longer than it normally would, and then it just works. So most of the time I don't have any issues. Now here are all the devices you're using according to the YouTube community poll. And I'm pretty surprised to see how popular some of these devices are, but it seems a huge majority of you are using 11 Pro Maxes and quite a few of you are using iPhone 11s as well. So if you'd like to see the iPhone 11 in more videos, let me know in the comments below. Now let's take a look at the YouTube community poll. Now the community poll has been out for over 24 hours and you can see 13,000 people voted. So I really appreciate everyone that voted. And based on this, only 18% are saying beta four is great. 5% are saying it's terrible. That's actually higher than last time. So if we go back maybe to the previous poll, you'll see 3% said it was terrible. In this poll, 5% said it was terrible and 19% say that you have bugs. So 24% are having issues with it as opposed to about 21% in the previous beta. So more people do seem to be having issues based on that, but 44% of you have not updated and 14% of you are using Android. So again, I appreciate everyone that voted on this. Let's take a look at some of the comments. There's 512 comments and I've read just about every one. Any that are just new, I haven't read, but other than that, I've read all of them. And that's how I compiled the data from earlier. Now let's take a look at some of them. Brahmi says, hello, I'm on iPhone 11 Pro Max and here's what I've been experiencing. Delayed multi-touch feedback, camera app not working at all, QuickTime player freezes in Safari. I haven't seen the QuickTime bug myself. Pheasant said, I've had a couple of random respring's and app crashes, ones that have never crashed before. I still have issues with Wi-Fi connectivity since beta one, and I have to keep toggling airplane mode to reset the modules. iPhone 11. Akshat Kambavi says, the battery life of beta three wasn't up to the mark, but on beta four, it's back to excellent. But frequent app crashes, even the messages app doesn't open quickly, but overall manageable. And I apologize if I don't say all of the names properly, but Kartik says, having great experience, a lot of battery improvements and smoothers, especially in iPad OS and no issues, including widgets so far. Only issue is iPad is Call of Duty game crashes on launch. Battery might be still improved. Anyways, this is a beta. Ernie Lopez says, my camera was spazzing out. My AirPods Pro have issues connecting to a call. Had the same issue on beta three. My messages crash from time to time using beta on the iPhone XS Max. Tiernan Flynn says, battery life is awful and performance is mediocre at best on my iPhone 8 plus 128 gigabyte. The Jess says, I'm using the iPhone 11 Pro Max and the update is pretty okay so far. Septian Patterson says, I've thoroughly enjoyed it on my SE 2016. Unlocking the phone is really fast, no crashes or lags, doesn't even feel like a beta. Apple is doing an excellent job at refining their software. Deuce May says, Notes keeps on crashing every time I edit the text color, iPhone 10. Eric Skoog says, running on an iPhone 11 Pro Max, no real issues so far and battery life has been fine. One issue I found is that the input option on Facebook Messenger disappears occasionally disappears. Zion Turner says, I'm not sure if I said that right, so I apologize. Pretty much perfect on my 10s Max, 3D touches back and no app crashes. Everything is smooth so far. DePaul Gandhi says, using on iPhone 10, messages widgets are very buggy. Battery drain is horrible, much improvements needed. Martin Ten Hoop says, much better battery life on my iPhone 11 Pro than on the previous betas. A few apps are not working properly, but other than that, no issues. Uncle Jerry 50th says, lots of app crash and autocorrect still seems super unreliable for some reason. Widgets don't always populate correctly like the news widget loading blank, running on the iPhone 10 and iPad Pro 2018. Ian says, I'm using it on my iPhone XR and overall it's been pretty stable. A few glitches here and there, overall it has been very stable. I'll read a couple more. Christina Copeland says, I'm using it on an 11 Pro and it's been great so far. Donald Reby says, iPhone XR running iOS 14 beta 4, just some bugs, otherwise pretty good. Battery and performance is good. Keyboard doesn't work right. When is iOS 14 coming to the public? I love your videos. Keep up the great work. Stay safe and healthy. And thank you. And iOS 14 should be out at the end of September or probably October this year since the iPhone 12 has been pushed back at least a few weeks according to Apple. Jared B says, it's been fantastic. Many issues fixed on the iPhone XR, running like a dream. 
And then Christina Virum says, it's great on my iPhone 11 Pro Max. So iOS 14 beta 4 may be with us another week or so, depending on what Apple does, but you just never know these days. But hopefully we see iOS 14 beta 5 this week instead of the following week. Let me know when you think iOS 14 beta 5 will release in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you think based on previous betas. Hopefully we'll also see iOS 13.6.1, but again, we just don't know what Apple's going to do with that, but based on them making iOS 13.5.1 no longer able to be downgraded to, we'll probably see something very soon. Now, other than that, of course, check out my channel on Monday where I normally post news. If there's anything significant other than an update, if an update comes out on Monday, I'll post that. Otherwise I generally post news or product reviews if there's something new. So be sure to check back for that. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description below. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.